Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to HR.com's information session about uh, HR professional certifications and how to prepare for them. First thing off the top, please note that on your control panel, which is on the right side of your screen for GoToMeeting, there's a section for questions. So at any time during this demo, which is about 25 minutes in length, uh, just feel free to type in your questions there, and we will take all of those over the air, um, as I mentioned, in about 25 minutes. Also note, on the same control panel, there is a section called Handouts. So in there, we have a copy of the slide deck as well as some, uh, some documents that we'll be addressing as we go through the demo for today. So my name is Brandon Wellsbury. I am the program manager for uh, all of the certification and recertification services that we offer here at HR.com. And I'm on the line with Jennifer Morantz, who is our lead program instructor for all the courses that we run. So we thank you for taking the time to join us today as we break down uh, the many aspects of HR certifications and, again, how you can prepare for them. So the first thing that we're going to do here is just walk you through our agenda which will give you a feel for some of the topics we're going to be addressing over the next 25 minutes. So right off the top, we'll give you an overview of the, uh, the major players involved with certification. So we'll discuss who we are as HR.com and the IHR, so that's the Institute for Human Resources. We'll discuss the HRCI, which is one of the certifying bodies, and we'll also discuss SHRM, who is the other certifying body. So as we get into a little bit more detail, um, We'll talk about exam breakdowns, eligibility requirements, dates, fees, deadlines, uh, where you can go to apply. So really the whole start to finish process in terms of getting certified. And then towards the end, we'll briefly uh, give you an overview of some of the services that we offer which can help you prepare for one of these certification exams. Okay, so as mentioned, let me introduce um, who we are as HR.com. So we were founded in 1999 as a social network platform. So you can think of us as kind of like a LinkedIn, uh, but specifically for HR. And as you can see, we do many different things. Um, generally speaking, we're a resource site. But one of the, uh, the pillars of what HR.com is, is central to HR training. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways in which we offer this training the most prominent one of which is via webinar, so very similar to uh, what we're all experiencing right now. So these fall into the category, or the brand, if you will, of the Institute for Human Resources. So it's really just the division of HR.com that delivers all of our services that are central to certification. Okay, So you can break that down into two categories. We have services for those who are looking to get certified for the first time. So those are some of the courses we'll address today. And then for those who are already certified, um, those folks have to get recertified every three years. So you have to earn um, what are generally known as continuing education credits. Okay, so we're also a provider of those as well. So we are not a certifying body. However, we are going to discuss who those certifying bodies are. So we'll discuss the HRCI as well as SHRM. So these are two brands that you might be familiar with. So with the HRCI, they are the certifying body for the PHR, which is the Professional in Human Resources, as well as the SPHR, the Senior Professional in Human Resources. So these have been around for um, quite a long time, so I'm sure you're familiar with these. What may be new to you is the SHRM certifications. So I'll get into more detail about the differences between the two of these, but um, as you can see on the slide here, SHRM is the provider of the SHRM CP, or the Certified Professional, and the SHRM SCP. So they, uh, they correlate with the PHR and the SPHR. But let's start with the HRCI. So again, the HRCI, which is the provider of the PHR and SPHR, they've been around for just over 30 years now. So essentially, um, when you go to take one of these exams, it is the HRCI that uh, has created that exam and they update the exam every year and ultimately determine whether or not you have passed that exam and earned a certification. Okay, They're also responsible for accepting all of your credits in the recertification process. Okay, There's a lot of certifications that the HRCI offers. Uh, as you can see here, we like to break them down by US-based or global certifications. So the two that we're going to be speaking to today are, of course, the PHR and the SPHR. And on those exams, there is content or questions 
specific to practicing HR in the US. Okay? So for the global certifications, they're essentially the international equivalents to the PHR and the SPHR, which is the HRBP and the HRMP. The only difference being is on those exams, there won't be any uh, questions that pertain to HR policy or laws or what have you that are specific to the US. Okay, But again, we're going to start off with the PHR and SPHR today. So I'm going to pass it over to our lead program instructor, Jen, and she's going to get into some more finite details of those two certifications. Great. Thank you, Brandon. Fantastic timing for those of you who are just joining us as we speak a little bit more specifically into HRCI's two most popular exams and the two um, that we're going to dive into, that being the PHR and the SPHR. Now, if at any time anybody has any questions or needs any clarification, please, with regards to all of these acronyms <laughs> that we're throwing your way, please feel welcome, as Brandon mentioned already, pump those questions into the questions field, which appears on the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. And we will be fielding all of these questions at the tail end of this session, and we will be happy to clarify everything and anything that you should need. Alrighty. So again, we are speaking about HRCI's exams, and we're focusing here on the PHR and the SPHR. So what you have in front of you is the exam structure. And either exam, or both exams rather, are really based on six different functional areas, as you can see right here on the left column. These functional areas are also known as bodies of knowledge, way differently based on either one of these exams, because the exams are slightly different in nature and in caliber. So you can see, for example, where the heaviest weights are. Now, one of the greatest things that people will really be concerned with, and rightfully so, is what are the differences in and of itself of these two exams? And that's one thing that I want to demonstrate throughout this demonstration. The PHR exam will focus on the technical and operational aspects of HR practices, laws, and regulations. The SPHR, on the other hand, just focusing here on the top row, focuses on a higher end of professional design and planning. Now, for some that may not know, the S in SPHR stands for senior, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail as well. I also like to think that the S also stands for the word strategic. But here we just want to illustrate to you really what these six different bodies of knowledge are and, again, where these weights are. The format of the exams share a lot of similarities, but there are some differences as well, and we want to demonstrate those for you. Both the PHR and the SPHR exam are made up of 175 multiple choice questions, and that's it. There are no short answer, there's no long answer, there's no essay, there's no practicum component. That's it. 175 multiple choice, four possible options. No true or false. This is a computer-based exam in a designated computer testing center with multiple locations from coast to coast across the country and, in fact, worldwide. As we already saw in the previous frame, both exams are based on six functional areas. Both exams will be allotted three hours in length maximum to complete those 175 multiple choice questions. Now we get into differences. The PHR exam, in terms of its nature, its caliber, is more application and problem solving. Whereas the SPHR exam is more strategic and upper level management. And again, that's the variation or that's the difference rather between the PHR, which is professional level, and the SPHR, which is more senior level. Now one key thing as well about the format or about um, the characteristics, <laughs> if I may, of these exams is that regardless of which body of knowledge a question may be focused on, the exam itself will challenge you to prove your competency and your mastery in the space based on cognitive classifications. And this is as per the last row on the frame in front of you. So the exam is going to challenge your ability to demonstrate, once again, your competencies and your mastery asking, in other words, you to demonstrate your knowledge and comprehension, 25 or 15 percent of the time, PHR and SPHR respectively, asking you 
to demonstrate your ability to apply and problem solve half of the questions per the exam. And then 25 and 35% of the questions will challenge your ability to synthesize and evaluate, which is, in other words, asking you to basically show your ability to bring together distant related items. So that's how the HRCI exams are really formatted. Now, to go on, HRCI says, please, by all means, we'd love to have you apply. In fact, we'd love to have you sit for our exam. However, we need to make sure that you are eligible. So in determining one's eligibility, you'll need basically two things. You'll need your education. So you'll first and foremost want to assess, do you have your master's degree, bachelor's, or less than bachelor's? And then with that, that will need to be paired up with years of experience. And that will fall into one of these two columns, where it's this lighter shade of gray, if you will, for PHR, and this more pinky rose <laughs> for the SPHR. And you'll want to see where you plot yourself. But you may be asking yourself, I don't know which exam to sit for. So give it some thought and ask yourself some of these thought-provoking questions. If you're leaning towards the PHR, Ask yourself, do you focus on program implementation? Are you accountable to another HR professional within the company? Do you have responsibilities that focus on the HR department, but not so much on the whole organization per se? Well, if you're leaning a little bit more towards the SPHR on the other hand, let's do the same thing. Ask yourself, do you design and plan HR policy because you focus on the big picture. So really, how is this going to impact the entire organization internally? And maybe, how can I also impact it externally? Do you have ultimate accountability in the HR department across all HR disciplines? And do you understand the business far beyond just HR because you understand how it influences the organization? You really have that bird's eye view, if you will. And then, of course, when you know which exam you want to pursue, then make sure you meet the eligibility requirements. And once you get the green light, because you've satisfied the eligibility requirements, then you're good to go. Brandon's now going to speak to you about HRCI exam registration. OK, thanks. So one of the things we're going to encounter here, and uh, one of the significant differences between all these certifications, is they have different prices and different dates. So, OK, so dates in which you can take the exam and dates in which you can apply for the exam. So we'll start off with the HRCI one, since we're kind of wrapping up that section of the demo. So, so generally speaking, there's two testing windows. OK, we have a spring window and a winter. So for the spring, that's running from May 1st to July 31st, it's a three-month window. And then uh, for the winter, we have November 1st through January 31st. Okay, so again, a three-month window. Typically, we, we recommend you start your preparation about four months out. Okay, so that's why, as we'll discuss later with HR.com, we start courses in January leading up to May. Okay, now with the HRCI, it's a little bit confusing with their um, application deadlines because they um, they advertise themselves as having applications open all year round. So Personally, I find it's a little bit confusing um, because people don't take note of certain deadlines. So just be aware that if you are, uh, for example, looking to test in the May through July testing window, there is a certain cutoff date in which you can apply for that. Anything afterwards, you'd be applying for the next testing window, which would be the winter. So just make sure you're aware of all the dates on their website. And then below that, we have costs. Okay, So their two certification exams have different costs. For the PHR, it's 450 of that 450, there is a $75 uh, non-refundable application fee, as it's called. So basically, if you book the exam and then decide uh, you want to cancel, you'll get your money back minus the $75. And then this is very uh, similar to the SPHR uh, in that it's $550 for the exam. And again, a $75 portion of that is non-refundable. Okay. So I recommend you go to the HRCI website at some point to check out um, the dates as well as the costs. OK, so that wraps up the HRCI. As I mentioned uh, a few moments ago, what we're dealing with now is two separate certifying bodies. OK, so I just want to provide a little, bit this, a little bit of distinction between HRCI and SHRM. So in the past, which was uh, really May and all the years prior to, May of last year, SHRM was the largest producer and distributor of study materials for uh, the PHR and the SPHR. Okay, so a significant portion of their business was supporting 
um, the certifications that we just talked about. Uh, now, in May of last year, SHRM introduced their own certifications called the SHRM CP and the SHRM SCP, which directly compete with the PHR and the SPHR. So what we're dealing with now is two separate certifying bodies, each with their own competing certifications. So one is not replacing the other. Um, it's really a, it's a Pepsi versus Coke sort of scenario where uh, you simply have to choose which certification you want to go for. Okay, so now we're going to break down the SHRM certifications in a little bit more detail, um, again, in terms of eligibility and uh, exam breakdown. Great. So we're going to go through a very similar, if not the same, process um, for the SHRM. So let's give them the same courtesy. SHRM has the CP and the SCP exam. So having two exams, one for professional level and one for senior level. Now their exams are slightly different in that, and as you can see from, excuse me, from or by <laughs> the green square and or the blue square, there are 160 or 180 questions. And you can see how they're broken down into their cognitive classifications based on knowledge, situational judgment, and what they call their field test items, which in other words, they're trying out on you, but they will not be point worthy. So in other words, they will not contribute to your overall passing mark. Now, SHRM, on the other hand, from different from what we saw moments ago with HRCI, they have two key subject areas, that being behavioral and technical. And as you can see, itemized here in the red font, the technical knowledge is further broken down, and of course, you can see as well where there is, of course, weight that you'll have a better understanding as to how your exam, be it CP or SCP, would be driven. And this tells you as well um, where you really want to be putting in your efforts and some more tender loving care into your studies. And that's how the exam structure is. Now, to be a little bit more specific, and forgive me, I should have mentioned this as well moments ago when we were going through the walkthrough for the HRCI exams, but in the handouts section on the control panel, which too appears on the right-hand side of your screen close to the questions box, you'll see that there are a number of different handouts, one of which is the SHRM exam, that's the box, the body of competency and knowledge, which is appearing on your screen right now. And this pyramid breaks down really the exam structure. So we have that PDF file for you to download. And there is one as well that breaks down the alternate exams, that being the PHR and the SPHR. So please feel welcome to download either one or both of those exams as you're sifting through which institution and furthermore which exam to pursue. So there's some um, research that we've done for you and have provided for you. Let's talk now about eligibility. So SHRM says as well, hey, we'd love to have you come and sit for one of our exams, but we need to make sure that you are ready, in other words. So SHRM takes the eligibility requirements just a little bit further by one step in that they say, well, your education may be HR related or maybe non-HR related. So you want to find yourself in one of those two columns for be it CP or SCP, so in the green or the blue columns, and then whether you have your master's, your bachelor's, or your less than bachelor's, so per these rows, and then pair up the number of years of experience. And I'll allow you just to eyeball this table so you can plot yourself accordingly. Now please note as well, if you find that these slides may be going a little bit too fast because you want to find where you exist on any one of these charts, then again, in the handout section on the control panel, we've actually already loaded up a copy of these slides but you can always request a copy of the slides as well. SHRM's exam registration, very similar to HRCI, as Brandon already walked you through, is based on two different testing windows. So we're seeing a symmetry here. So there's the spring testing window, and that runs from May 1st through July 15th, so you have two and a half months to take the test. Or there's the winter, and that runs December 1st through until February 15th of the next calendar year. Can you believe it? That's already 2017. Kind of hard to believe. They, too, as well have application deadlines, and please take a look at those dates. Please note, as well, in red with the asterisks, here, unlike what we saw before, there is a late cutoff date, or I should say an early bird registration, where late fees will take effect. So please make note of these dates. Of course, all of this information, as with everything, is of course available at the SHRM website. 
the fees are based on whether or not you are a member of SHRM, regardless of which exam you're taking, where it's $300 if you are a SHRM member, or $400 if you are not a SHRM member. Moving right along, so the question now is, Okay, you, now you're equipped with there are four different exams amongst two different organizations. Yes, you want to take your exam. Yes, you have an idea as to which exam you want to take. Amazing. Now it's time to get ready because this is a very big undertaking. This is like a marathon. This is where we come in. We want to help you get ready. We have been through this marathon several times, more than several times in fact. Some of you may be asking though, why? <laughs> why should I take this on? Why should I get certified? Well, in getting certified, you will become a recognized master in the space. This will enhance your core competencies in the profession. You will gain internal and external market advantage. It will add value to your own personal marketability. You'll have the opportunity to network with field experts and leaders. Certification will add value to the organization. And in becoming certified, this will increase your own professional worth, and it has the potential for greater earnings. So here at HR.com, we're thrilled to have four different study programs. Working my way from left to right, let's start with the materials only. We have partnered up with an organization called HRCP, and they have produced a fantastic learning system, and believe you me, we have done our research and we have fallen in love with this one. So we are happy to provide for you six study manuals, hundreds of flashcards, over 800 online practice exam questions, and this is all for the purchase price of $450. Alternatively, if you prefer to do a little bit more of a close to the testing window kind of four-day refresher course, and we certainly have that, um, dates to be announced, but since the testing window is opening in May, then you were looking at early April dates, but again, those are to be announced, so please circle back with us. But the price of our four-day refresher course is $350, and that is accumulation of 20 hours of live online virtual classrooms, and that takes place over two consecutive weekends. We also offer a self-paced comprehensive online course, so you go at your pace with our pre-recorded modules, and that would also include the full comprehensive study system, but I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. And we also have our staple item, which is a live online course. And that I'm going to talk in more elaboration right now. So let's talk about our 16-week online course, our staple item. This is um, our, if I may, our, our, our breadwinner. <laughs> this is um, what has really, really been very, very successful and very, very well received here. So in enrolling in a 16-week online course, what you would receive is 30 hours of live online class instruction with a professional who is currently practicing in the space, who will serve as your coach, who will serve as your mentor. You will receive these six study manuals. You will receive hundreds of flashcards. You will receive online practice exams. You will receive as well additional study tips and testing recommendations. You will receive a personal excellence app to constantly remind you of things to be doing, things to be remembering that comes to your personal smart device. And all this comes with an HR.com profile. Here we have registration for our online course at the fee of $950, which please note excludes the exam fees. So everything we talked about with regards to exam fees, it is not included here. But for $950, our 16-week course takes place twice a week, every week, for 16 weeks. We have combinations of groups that are starting as early as in 48 hours from now, and those classes take place on a combination of a Wednesday and a Sunday at either 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock Eastern Time to accommodate a variety of different time zones. If you prefer to start in February, we also have combinations for that month, and again, for March. Okay, so I'll allow you just to take a look at all of our availability that is coming up for January, February, and March. Please note, if you're interested in starting in literally 48 hours from now and joining me, as I will be the instructor, we have very limited spaces. Only seven spaces between the two groups remain. So please visit us at hr.com slash prep course immediately. 
Alternatively, if you prefer, we also have a self-paced comprehensive online course. So for $900, which also excludes the exam fees, you will have 20 hours of our uh, instructional design broken down into our modules. You will have a virtual instructor who you can go to, who will be your coach, who will be your guide, if you will, someone that you can ask questions to if the um, lessons you know, warrants a little bit more elaboration. But you would also get the full learning system, all of your study manuals your flashcards, your online practice exams, all of the additional tutorials with tips and recommendations, the app, and of course, the complimentary HR.com profile. Let me just give you a couple of snapshots. I keep talking about this learning system. Let me show you what it looks like. Here I have an extraction of a page from our learning system. And what I'm trying to relay here to you is, and although I realize it's hard to see, but we use an easy language to ingest because it's all about the retention of learning. Lots of visuals, lots of images, lots of examples. And particularly in the live class, your instructor will go, of course, far above and beyond to continue to drive that point with even more examples through vicarious learning. Here is a snapshot of our practice exams, which echo very closely to the real exam by functionality. But again, we're trying to blend in here those problem-solving questions, those knowledge-based questions, and providing you feedback as well. Of course, we have the flashcards that we help to guide you on your own, but we also bleed into, of course, the course as well, because you'll be able to challenge your knowledge, your understanding, your retention by use of these flashcards, where on one side is a key buzzword, and on the other side of the card would be the definition or explanation. Brandon now is going to take over and talk to you a little bit more about additional resources, registration, and so forth. Okay, great. Thanks. So as we wrap up here, again, uh, just going to help you, um, if you have any more questions or need some answers, I'm going to show you where you can go to get that information, as well as where you can go to begin this whole process. Okay? So starting with HR.com, we have two links here. The first one, HR.com slash prep course is where one would go to view all the dates of our courses as well as the enrollment. Okay, below that is hr.com slash SHRM versus HRCI. So what we've done here is we've put together um, a significant size chart which breaks down all the certifications that we've discussed. Okay, so it'll break them down by eligibility, um, a little bit of background information about the certifying bodies, preparation, recertification, so all that good stuff. It's a good link to visit if you have uh, some more questions. Below that is HRCP, so that's the company that we've partnered with to offer the courses that we do. So if you want to have a, a more detailed look at the study materials, you can go there. And then below that is the respective certifying bodies. So as I'm sure you're familiar with now, the HRCI, if you're interested in the PHR or SPHR, and below that, the SHRM certification site. So again, the first thing that you want to do if, if you're thinking about getting certified is have your eligibility checked. So that can be done on each of those respective sites, so uh, good websites to be familiar with. And then lastly is our LinkedIn group where we periodically post updates about uh, not only our own certification programs, but really any updates or change-ups happening in the industry. So if you want to stay in the loop on this stuff, feel free to join that group. Okay, and lastly, we are here to take any questions that you may have. So just as a reminder, one more time, you can feel free to type in your questions uh, in the question box on your control panel. So the right side of your screen on the GoToMeeting. So if you just give us one moment here, we're just going to read through some of these questions. <clears throat> so we have a question asking, uh, about someone who currently resides outside of the U.S. but plans to practice HR inside the U.S. So the question being, would it be better off getting an SPHR, which is the U.S. certification, versus one of the global certifications, HRBP or HRNP? Um, so I would recommend two things, actually. The HRCI does have a certification for those who practice HR um, across multiple countries. So it's called the GPHR, and on that exam, that stands for Global Professional and Human Resources, by the way. Um, on that exam, there is questions about practicing in the U.S., but there's also questions about managing HR departments um, across, again, multiple countries. So you might want to look into that. So that's the GPHR.
<clears throat> okay, so we have a question here. This is a good question, actually, um, asking about the difference uh, between the HRCI and SHRM certifications and, and perhaps a recommendation. So uh, as an organization, being HR.com, really our job is just to provide the best test prep that we can. Uh, so whichever certification the individual wants to pursue, that's the one um, they can feel free to do. However, personally, uh, Jen and myself typically recommend the HRCI certifications over the SHRM certifications. Really the only reason being is because the PHR and the SPHR are just a lot more well known and recognized among uh, organizations and recruiters because they've been around for so long. Whereas with the SHRM certifications, as I mentioned, they've only been around since last May. Um, so really just the way it is now is they're not as well recognized and really that's what you want out of a certification, right? You want to be recognized for your, um, your established knowledge in HR, hopefully to either advance within the organization you're a part of or to uh, seek out a new role, okay? Okay, so that appears to be the only questions that we have at this time. If you do have more questions at a later time, you can feel free to send us an email certification at hr.com. We also have a live chat service on our website or you can give us a call at the number on the screen. Okay. Also we have uh, a promo code on the screen so if you are interested in signing up for a course you can save uh, $65 actually in total uh, just by using that demo pass promo code. So feel free to write that down uh, or download the slide deck from um, the control panel. So we thank you for joining us today and we hope that this was helpful for you in understanding a little bit more about HR certification as well as some of the services that HR.com offers to help you prepare and pass one of these exams. So again, any questions, let us know and we hope you have a great day. Thanks.